Greetings, this is Ron for the Encyclopedia team. It is with great pleasure we have Dr. Suresh Nisirajan to this interview. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, thank you for having me. So, Dr. Nisirajan, before we dive in, our readers would love to get to know you a bit better. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, I'm a scientist, uh, professor, researcher, and an industrial consultant in the area of uh, precision livestock farming. Basically, I am a, a biological engineer by training, all three degrees, bachelor's, master's, and PhD. Uh, over the past 10 years or so, we have been uh, involved in developing a number of uh, solutions using big data, artificial intelligence for enhancing the animal welfare and the animal production, uh, especially with a bigger focus on livestock, poultry, swine, and pig industries. Thank you. So let's move to the main focus of this interview. Let's start with your research of precision livestock farming. Can you briefly tell us some information or background about it? Sure, Ran. Uh, precision livestock farming is not really new. Uh, people have been working on uh, for the past 20 years or so, but only in the past uh, three years, two years, it's gaining more attention uh, uh, among the researchers, among the students, and also among the industries. Um, now, what we are looking at is we are mo moving from PLF or precision livestock farming to DLF or digital livestock farming. So the end goal, the unique advantages of these technologies are how do we move from reactive to predictive using digital approaches such as sensor technologies, artificial intelligence, big data uh, in terms of uh, detecting diseases in animals before it can happen. So the main difference is a PLF, the word precision, uh, aims to maximize the data collection to increase efficiency and production for farming and livestock management, while the DLF or the digital livestock farming seeks to infer real-time data. So can we be able to collect uh, on, on the go, continuously collect data from the animals and then develop predictive data modeling using machine learning approaches? So DLF gives a, a short-term automated management responses, a near-term possibility, and the possibility to move and even predict before things can happen, uh, uh, such as prescriptive capabilities. So in the PLF, it's just a stepwise uh, uh, increment. So instead of stepwise improvements, we can incrementally adding data points Digital livestock farming introduces fundamental changes in the operations and value delivery that enhance the accuracy of processes, models, and farm businesses. For example, right now we are talking about climate change, uh, the uh, uh, COVID pandemic uh, that coming from the animals. So what is the possibility we could uh, come up with certain sustainability indices using data, using a, a large number of sensor-enabled information in livestock so that we can provide well-being for the animals, um, uh, enrich the quality of the life of these animals, uh, and of course, uh, thereby eventually contribute to the uh, comfort and the um, uh, uh, welfare for the humans as well eventually. Thank you for your introduction. So how much work your research group had done to precision livestock farming? Are there any limitations to your research? Um, we have been working in this for almost two decades. Uh, the unique advantages, I would say, we can go from a gross to subtle level, uh, from reactive to predictive, investigation from one dimensional to multi-dimensional, shifting the needle from um, production perspective to sustainability and welfare aspects. So these are some of the unique advantages of these solutions. 
So for example, uh, right now what we are looking at is we can uh, deploy uh, different types of camera technologies and real-time sensors uh, either on the animals or at a specific remote distance and collect continuous automated data so that decisions can be made in advance by the producers, farmers, policy makers, etc. Uh, we have the capability to uh, determine emotions of farm animals uh, because a happy cow or a happy pig is a productive cow or a productive pig. So by understanding the uh, mental makeup and the emotional feelings of these animals using digital technologies and artificial intelligence, we can cater and provide a very good quality of life for these animals. And of course, increase the profit for the uh, farmers and producers. Another example is uh, uh, we could um, uh, understand the diseases even before that can happen. For example, there are uh, markers such as micro RNAs. These are very small um, six to 12 uh, uh, signaling cascades. Um, so we could use those biomarkers to say something about, hey, you know what? In three to six months from today, there is a possibility of these group of animals are going to get sick because of there is certain outliers are happening and we do a multimodal approach. We combine data with the environment, data from behavior, physiology, um, uh, uh, and immunology. So by using a 360 degree holistic approach, we can provide solutions to some of these uh, challenging problems using artificial intelligence and big data. So these are some of the projects we have been working on in the past few years uh, uh, in this. I'm sure all the animals are really appreciate in the works that you do. <laughs> so, so next question is, are you working on any new projects right now? How do you think those might help? Uh, yes, there are a few things that's happening. For example, um, one deals with development of digital twins for uh, farm animals, uh, what we call as a digital avatar or a metaverse. For example, uh, we put a large number of sensors on these animals. We also employ thermal camera, regular camera, 3D vision camera, Kinect camera, and continuously collect many, many types of data, hot data, activity, respiration, uh, the sweating, and all types of data. Along with these uh, vital signs, we collect the behavioral indices, and then actually emulate a real animal but that's a digital animal. So we can answer and understand a large number of what if scenarios. For example, if the feed composition from the feeding company is different or it's going to delay for two weeks, what is the effect of the group of animals, the farmers are uh, growing, uh, rearing at this moment? Uh, can I be able to manage the aggressive or cannibalistic behavior such as feather pecking or tail biting of the um, either chickens or poultry or pigs uh, um, uh, by understanding the current behavior of these digital twins. So a real animal and then there is a simultaneous parallel uh, digital animal that's being currently developed. So by understanding the various interconnectedness and multitude of numerous parameters of the uh, digital signals and markers we are getting from these digital animal, we could make a large number of decisions to enhance the welfare, the quality, etc. Like we could help veterinarians, uh, policy makers, producers, and the industrial people uh, to uh, uh, come up with new ways. So that's an exciting area. So we could also add the emotional contagion, the uh, uh, enhance the quality of relationship between the farmer and the animal. Uh, so we can uh, have a better quality and the interaction between the animal caretaker and the animal, and even understand the mental makeup of these animals using digital twin and digital avatar technologies. Really interesting projects you are working on. So before we finish, we would like to ask, what's your perspective of this research? So digital livestock farming, uh, smart agriculture, smart livestock farming is the current trend. It will open up a large number of ways of solving problems uh, that were not possible before, mainly because of artificial intelligence and sensory enabled data. 
So people sometimes think, hey, you know what, if you bring in uh, uh, artificial intelligence, there is a possibility to uh, 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 affect the employment rate or labor, but that's not true. It is more of a complementary way because uh, human potential human ways of doing things is a bit subjective. When I, I go and assess the welfare of the animals, it's a little bit different than my colleague or a veterinarian. So to overcome the subjectivity, to be able to uh, provide more precise um, way of enhancing the quality of animals, digital livestock uh, tech, uh, farming is much, much needed. By using the artificial intelligence and the proliferation of the sensor technologies, what we are trying to do is enhance or uh, develop new solutions in the modern animal farming so that we can understand the spatial reality and uh, uh, do more. So what we are doing right now for the next part of your question is in terms of the prospection, we are just in the surface level. There is much more need to be done. I believe at least for the next uh, uh, two decades, uh, this area is going to uh, be much more active and develop novel solutions uh, for enhancing the quality of life of animals. And of course, bring more profits for the producers and farmers. Thank you. We wish you and your team the best of luck on your future research. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Ron. You have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.